start that hello everyone welcome back today we have a game that was played between magnus carlson the reigning world chess champion from norway and Vidit santos gujarati a very strong grandmaster i believe currently number two or three in india after vishyanan playing with the black pieces final game of the pro chess league now going into this round the canadian chess bras were crushing it they were ahead by i believe three points so let's see what happens in this final game all right magnus with the white pieces he starts by playing b3 we get pawn to d5 here and of course the sound is not working on the moves for those of you guys who are wondering because of course the chess.com site is a little bit shaky at times okay we get bishop to b2 being played here now we get c5 played by beat it we get pawn to e3 and now we get this move pawn to a6 now this is a very strong setup beat it actually used this against grandmaster hikaru nakamura in the rapid chess championship some months ago in that game after knight to f3 knight c6 D4 was played by Hikaru, and after pawn takes pawn, I believe it was pawn takes, or maybe maybe it wasn't pawn takes, Vita played this move F6 very early on, and the game was very interesting. So it's worth noting that here Vita decides to stay a little bit more standard by playing knight to F6, rather than trying to trade or play, F, play for F6 and E5. So it's interesting, the differences. We got D takes C5, played by Magnus, E6, and now A3. Bishop takes C5, B4, Bishop A7. Now this is the first move that is a little bit unusual. The bishop can also go to e7 or d6 here now i kind of like it more on this diagonal because you keep an eye on these pawns the bishop can see the pawns by going bishop a7 how are you really going to attack these two pawns on e3 and f2 you can't really play d4 because if you ever go d4 boom 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 and you're simply down one pawn here in this position white just has an extra pawn in the center of the board so what's going on so you, bishop a7 I don't really like it I think the bishop on e7 is better because after say white goes bishop e2 you can always play an a5 type move to put pressure on the pawns on b4 and a3 so all right what do we get we get bishop a7 from Vita. now keep in mind of course it's a game with 10 minutes and two second increments so there are going to be some mistakes from both sides knight bd2 castles c4 played by magnus and now we get this move d takes c4 played by Vita. now this is a very interesting move here because d4 is also a serious possibility because after pawn takes knight takes if everything gets traded here black is a little bit quicker here white has not developed the king out of the center of the board you have four pieces on the original square and black can also play e5 and, and develop this bishop to the f5 or g4 squares it looks a little bit better for black so it's interesting that Vita did not consider this instead he decides to trade and after knight takes c4 white should never be able to get in trouble here because we are heading into a queenless end game and Magnus as we know is one of the best players in the world when you play queenless end games against him he has beaten just about everybody including myself uh he's pulled off many miraculous swindles along the way so we get b5 knight d6 now you do not trade the queens on d8 right away because if you trade now the d6 square is covered and the knight has to probably go back unless you want to go to the edge of the board and end up with these um two pawns on a3 and a5 so here knight d6 is played interesting move bishop d7 we get bishop to d3 queen to e7 again trying to remove this knight from the d6 square magnus castles and now Vita plays knight d5 for everybody who is watching this video you're probably wondering well there's a free knight on d6 now this would lose the classic xqc fossil because after queen takes d6 i discover the fossil with bishop takes pawn i'm digging here i take the pawn checking the king and then i win the queen on d6 so after knight to d5 is knight d5 is played instead because you don't want to lose your queen we get knight back to e4 because now if you play a move like rook c1 black simply takes the knight here and now when you take on h7 there is no fossil to be found in the ground because after king takes h7 the knight is in the way of the queen so you've just lost two drills and in return you have not found any fossils that's not really a very good trade-off so instead we get knight to e4 rook d8 is played by Vita here and now we get rook c1 bishop to e8 is played now the idea very simply here is that magnus has some great great ops here the scope towards g7 and h7 is really good you also have a rook on the c file if white can go like queen c2 and rook, rook d1 you basically have achieved the maximum you can from this position with the bishops and the knights really everything is placed perfectly so we get bishop to e8 Vita trying to open up this d file here and now we get queen to e2 played by magnus not queen to c2 because even though it probably doesn't work there are ideas like knight takes b4 pawn takes knight and knight takes pawn and you have a fork of the queen on c2 and the bishop on d3 so we get queen to e2 now h6 is played here by Vita, a move that i guess the idea is simply to stop white from putting a knight on g5 magnus goes rook fd1 creating more harmony the rooks are now on the two open files here and you really think that white should be better 
Rook a c8 is played by Vita, and now Magnus goes to h3. Now, this move, again, shows just how much an influence uh, XQC has had on the game of chess, because when Magnus plays h3, there's a very simple idea. He's worried about getting ice skated on the back rank here, so by playing h3, he creates space for the king on h2. Now, as we know, Magnus, of course, learned this from the master himself, Felix Longjump. So he plays h3 to avoid the ice skater on the back rank. We get bishop to b6 played here, and now Magnus goes knight g3. Now the idea behind knight g3 is sort of twofold. White wants to maybe put the knight on h5 and target this weak pawn in front of the black king. Additionally, by moving the knight from the square, white can try to create a classic double A battery setup with the bishop and the queen where you go for a checkmate on h7, for example, and you win the game. So knight g3, dual purpose move. We get knight to f6 being played here by Vita, and now Magnus goes bishop b1, as expected. These ops are very, very menacing. They're on these two very long diagonals towards the black king, and additionally, queen c2 is a huge threat as well. Rook takes d1 is played by Vita. We get rook takes d1 played by Magnus, a little trade. Rook d8, idea very simple. With less pieces on the board with, without the rooks here, these ideas with the queen and the bishops become a lot less effective, because even here, for example, let's just say you get exactly what you want with queen h7, after king h8, check, king f8, queen h8, check, king e7, black's king is very safe in the middle of the board. The knights can't really jump here. You have no rooks in the middle of the board anymore, so black is completely fine. So Magnus plays rook c1, trying to keep a set of rooks on the board. We get king to f8 being played by Vita. Now this move, I think, is simply a move that he plays because he's worried about getting batteried on the diagonal by the queen and the bishop. Magnus goes knight e4 here. We get knight to d5 being played by Vita. Looks like a normal move. Again, if you trade the knights on e4 in this position, now your knight is under attack. And if you move, you're basically yielding the c file to the rook on c1. So we get knight d5, knight c3 played by Magnus. Now this move, I don't really like that much because after black goes knight f6, white's knight on c3 isn't doing anything. You're not targeting anything on d5. The pawn on b5 is protected by the pawn on a6. And the best you can probably do is go back to e4, but then Vita will just play knight d5 and say, ha, 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 you wasted time, and I'm ready to make a draw with you because you're the world champion and you're just better than me. Instead, Magus decides to play queen c2 here, lining up the battery, and I guess he's just hoping that eventually he can go knight e4 or maybe put pressure on the c file. We get rook to c8 played by Vita, and now Magus plays knight to e4 again, offering the trade. Vita correctly plays knight e5 because here, if you trade the knights on e4, now white is getting in with queen h7. You can play f5 to stop it, but then you create some weaknesses here with these two pawns, and white is for choice. So we get knight to d5. Vita again says, no, sir, I will not trade the knights. Magus goes knight to c5 here saying, yes, I will get my queen to h7 and checkmate you. We get bishop takes c5 here, and now Magus... Uh... So those of you who are watching, you'll notice that I'm doing this live on the fly. Um, excuse me? Wait, excuse me? Uh, there's bishop takes g7 here. If black goes king g8, queen h7 is checkmate. If black plays king takes bishop, queen h7, and you've effectively checkmated black king with your classic double-A batteries. Because now black goes king f8, you have queen h8, checkmate, king has no squares. King goes forward to this square. You simply take the pawn. King has no squares available. E5, G5, F5, G7, G6. Every square is covered. Um, so the world chess champion, Magnus Carlsen, apparently needs to do uh, some tactics. He needs to study his puzzle rush because bishop takes G7 is a very simple mate in three. Alas, the world champion doesn't see it. Instead, he plays queen H7 here, which is also unconscionable because he did see the idea of queen H7 with bishop G7. Nonetheless, the game goes on. We get f6 from Vita, queen to h8, king to f7, and now Magnus plays rook takes bishop. Now, in this position, Magnus is still quite a bit better. He has a double op combo. There are a lot of weaknesses around the black king. The queen is invading on the eighth rank. You even have knight h4 with bishop coming into this very juicy g6 square. We get queen to b7 from Vita, and now e4 is played, knight f4, and now queen h7. Now, this, of course, is a mistake. Obviously, once again, to reiterate the point that I just talked about, Magnus last night should have been doing puzzle rush, studying his tactics rather than playing bullet games with time odds against Alexander Botez. So Magnus not quite prioritizing his time correctly because after bishop takes f6 here, if black takes with the pawn, you have queen h7 check. Oopsies, there goes the queen. And if black takes here with the king on f6 in this position, you simply go queen to f8. 
bishop to f7 and now you have this very tricky move e5 check king has no squares available because the king can't go to g6 or f5 it's covered by the bishop you can't go to g5 or e7 or e5 frankly every square is covered by the knight the bishop and the queen after knight takes pawn here white simply goes rook takes rook and on first glance you might think well wait black can take and then take here and uh-oh black is checkmating on g2 the knight and the queen are really strong as I myself have said many times a knight on f4 is worth at least a queen so it's a very very powerful piece however in this position white can play queen to d8 check king has no squares available you got to come up to e5 and now after queen to c7 check if you go to d4 for example you get checkmated by queen c5 here pawn guards the queen and the bishop covers the other two squares where the king can go and if black tries to go king back to f6 in this position I oh wait no I thought white could play queen c3 apparently queen c3 is no good though because after trade there's 92 with a fork of the rook so maybe what you actually have to do here um is you actually have to probably play I guess rook to c5 check forcing the knight to block a check and now there simply are no checkmates because you can't checkmate with the lone queen at any rate the show goes on Magnus plays queen h7 we get knight to e7 being played here by Vita he wants to trade the rooks here because if the rooks come off the board for example you'll notice that even though white has these really nice bishops knight and queen there's really no entry these e5 and g5 squares are covered by this black pawn the bishop you need to push to open up this scope but then I go here and now both your scopes are completely shut down you have pawns in the way so the bishops can't do anything so here we get knight to e5 pawn takes knight Bishop takes pawn Magnus goes insane trying to get a checkmate here on g7 he's also targeting the Knight on f4 as well we get Knight h5 g4 played and now Vita trades the Rooks and goes Knight to f6 here and everything is backfired now because now Magnus's Queen is under attack he's also down simply a Knight here he's two Bishops versus two Knights and a Bishop he's missing one three is better than zero additionally if you play queen to h8 here now I go knight g6 and these knights trap the white queen in the corner of the board queen cannot go to any of these squares or else it will simply be captured so Magnus has to trade and now he has a queen and a bishop Vita has a queen knight and bishop and with the extra knight here this should be pretty smooth sailing to victory you get g5 pawn takes pawn e5 played by Magnus desperately trying to do something if king e5 queen g7 at least the queen is loose here and black has some weaknesses instead Vita plays king f7 very good move and in this position we get queen to h5 check being played king to f8 queen takes g5 and now queen f3 is played and Vita basically tells Magnus nice try with your battery but now I'm going to create my own battery with bishop c6 and checkmate the white king in the corner so we get queen to g4 Vita plays bishop c6 because even though there are many ways to win there's style points and whatnot at the end of the day you need to win a win is better than trying to showboat you know I'll give you an example there was a Super Bowl all those years ago because I'm a boomer between I believe it was the Dallas Cowboys and uh I forget which team it was but I think it was uh it was Leon it was what's his name Leon Leon Lett or somebody and basically he started celebrating he started showboating as he was going to the end zone fumbles the ball away and they don't get a touchdown same thing here you don't want to fumble away the victory and lose the game because if you lose the game your teammates are going to be very mad at you and they're going to say what's wrong with you dude you didn't put the game away when you had to so it's all about business and getting the job done so we so we get bishop to c6 here guarding the queen on f3 we get queen takes queen because of course magnus is getting checkmated if you go king h2 there's queen takes f2 check if you block you get mated by the bishop and the queen if you don't go that way and you don't trade the queens king f one's the only other move but here i can even just check king e2 take the bishop now i have a bishop and a knight and i will win this game in my sleep so here we get queen takes queen bishop takes queen is played and now king h2 by magnus game is effectively over Vita just has to mop it up because with only a bishop on the board not even the world chess champion Magnus Carlsen can come back from that we get king g3 bishop d5 f4 king e7 king f2 knight a5 h4 knight c4 trying to win this pawn and then you just push p down the board and finish off Magnus we get bishop d3 knight takes pawn king e3 is played here and after a5 we get king d4 bishop to c6 Magnus plays on with h5 after b4 nothing you can do black has no weaknesses everything is guarded he has two pawns on the queen side on top of having an extra knight so it's all over except for the crying we get f5 pawn takes pawn bishop takes pawn is played and now a4 e6 is played here and after b3 we get king c3 knight b5 
king to b2 and knight d4 or king b4 sorry knight to d4 and here Magnus Carlsen has to resign he's waited a, probably too long here he could have resigned about two minutes uh, earlier or at least like 10 moves earlier at the very least but he plays on at any rate Vita does not let it slip and Magnus resigns simply because black has two protected pawns you can move the bishop but now I will just gobble go here gobble and sooner or later one of these pawns will get down the board and become a queen so those of you guys who are watching this video, I hope you enjoyed this recap. Make sure to hit that subscribe button below if you have not already. And we'll be back with some more great content in the very, very near future.